Thank you for subscribing to the Extra Mile Podcast. Help us out by leaving a review and a five-star rating wherever you download the show. After leaving a review, slide on into our DMs over on social media at Mississippi DOT and let us know. As a thank you, we have compiled a Google Map list of all of our guests' favorite spots to eat on Mississippi highways. It is our gift to you. Seriously, you guys are the best. We could not do the show without you, and we greatly appreciate the support. Remember, drive smart out there on Mississippi highways. MDOT presents the Extra Mile Podcast. Welcome in to another edition of the Extra Mile Podcast presented by the Mississippi Department of Transportation. I'm Paul Katul, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Will Kraft. And today we have an internal guest, very excited to welcome Trudy Laughlin, who is the Director of Pre-Construction Proje- Project Management here at MDOT. Trudy, thank you for making time for us and coming in and speaking with us today. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Absolutely. So we'll just kind of get started with a little bit of a softball, but kind of tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe outside of work. Who are you? Well, I'm Trudy Laughlin. I'm married to my husband, Dan, and we have two kids, Caroline and Cooper, and we live in the uh, Pisgah community of Northern Rankin County. Okay. I'm uh, originally from Bassfield, so oh, Southern cool. Mississippi girl. Uh, that's where I grew up, went to Southern Miss. To the top. So I'm a Southern Miss grad. Um, my husband went to Ole Miss, though, so we, well, we're Ole Miss people, too. That's okay. Um, we're, I'm outnumbered here at MDOT, <laughs> regardless. Oh, yes, we are. Regardless. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I've been here at MDOT since 1998, so it's I've spent over half my life here. So 1998. Let's wow. get into some of that there. So did you uh, did you always think when you were from the time you were born to a little girl, I just cannot wait to work at MDOT? <laughs> I had no idea what we even did at MDOT, so no. Sure. No, I honestly thought that I wanted to be an attorney. And, okay. Um, but I graduated with my fair legal degree and decided no, I'm done with school. It's time to to go to work but even then I didn't know anything about MDOT and how gotcha. my education could contribute to that but what, what was your foot in the door here um actually Mr. Ronnie Shales was okay. the Southern District Highway Commissioner at the time and he's a to this day a close family friend of ours and so they were he and his wife were at my parents house one night playing cards and um I mean, this was 27 years ago, so I remember this conversation because I was sitting at the bar at my parents' house, and he said, Trudy, I have the perfect job for you. And I was like, what's that? And he said, you need to be a right-of-way agent. And I was like, what do they do? And he honestly, he didn't know a lot of details, but sure. he, he knew that I had an interest in real estate and um, title abstracting. That was something I really enjoyed okay. as part of my paralegal degree. And so he knew that I could apply some of that to this, um, but... I don't know, it was kind of fate because I guess, I mean, he just, he said those words, I applied for the job and I've been here ever since. 27 years later. I spent those first 26 years of my career in right of way, so I've never done anything else, but MDOT's the only place I've ever worked and that was until now was the only division I'd ever worked in. Nice, okay. So I'm very familiar with the right of way process out there, I'm telling you. And you, uh, you worked your way up to division director there, right? Yes, I did. I came in as, um, actually, I wanted to do, like I said, the title abstracting, but they didn't have a position for that. So I had to do right-of-way acquisition is where I had to start. And that, that's not for everybody. That is a tough world, no doubt. It's not easy to buy property that is not for sale. Yes. Um, so I, after about eight or ten months in that, I was able to switch to the title abstracting and did that for several years and then just continued to work my way up and spent the last ten years there as division director. Look, if you're tuning into the MDOT podcast, you probably already know, but can you kind of just define right-of-way just for maybe anybody that doesn't? Well, first know. of all, you said it correctly. It is right-of-way, not nice. right-of-way. Oh, I, yeah. I got it. I see that um, a lot and cringe when I see that. Um, <laughs> we like to say that it's the human element to what we do at MDOT. Um, like I said, it's not easy to buy property that's not for sale. Yeah. Um, you know, unfortunately, people are displaced at times. Businesses are displaced, and, and that's... That's a hard thing to do, and we try to avoid that as much as sure. possible, but sometimes it's just not its not possible in some situations. And so as far as the right-of-way process as a whole, it starts with the title abstracting, and that's uh, where we determine who owns the property that we have to acquire. And then we appraise it, and we purchase it, relocate any 
from fencing to churches or businesses or whatever's impacted, clear the right of way of those improvements or and uh, have it ready for construction. So it's there's a lot. It's highly yeah. regulated. It can be timely, um, but it, it's re it's rewarding to s just like everything else we do here. When you see the benefits of a huge cog, you know, in, in the process of very much so of M dot projects, no doubt. Well, and you, you've sort of alluded to all this, but, you know, being in right away and over right away, now you're really over right away in this new role. Uh, I say new now, what, about a year? January will be a year. January, so coming up quick. It's wow. passed uh, quickly. So what is this new, your new role that you're in there? So um, it's, my title is Director of Pre-Construction Program Management. Typically, it, in the past, before January, it was Assistant Chief Engineer of Pre-Construction, but I'm not an engineer. Um, but the pre-construction process is such a huge part of what we do at okay. MDOT. Not to take away from our friends and that's right the, on the other side, yeah. um, but it, it's a just a lot goes into that to get you to the point of construction. And so, um, somebody had the great great idea that we should divvy up those roles in pre-construction. And so we have the engineering side that my counterpart Lee Frederick is over and I'm sure he's part of the reason I'm sitting here right now <laughs> um, and then I have right-of-way environmental survey um, I'm over our program management which we use a project called uh, PDPM oh yes project development project management which we use for our scheduling and stuff and so I'm over that and utility relocation falls in there some too and yeah so what the PDPM, the Pro Project Development Project Management, for folks that may not know this, I'm a little ignorant myself. That's how all of our projects go into the system. Yes. We keep up dates, times, quantity, all these different right. things. Gotcha. Yes. So good. It's great. It's an <laughs> yeah. and actually it's it's an M dot built program. Oh wow. Um, okay. Our IS department, I'm sure y'all know this already, but they are phenomenal. They have created oh, yeah. many projects that I've been able to use, you know, during my time here for us in right away or use those they've created for other divisions but yes they have someone that manages that the actual structure of the program for us and then um, most all of us at MDOT most divisions use it to some degree on the office of highway side to track and schedule our projects and make sure we deliver on time and so we track basically each step of the process through that program so it's a that has taken a lot of my time the last 10 months sure no doubt I couldn't imagine you know how many I won't even throw a number out there but however many years ago it was trying to manage all the the numbers and financials that go into these projects and stuff with just you know kind of the old school pen and paper oh, yeah. uh, and you know I guess filing cabinets full of uh, folders and binders and mm -hmm. paperwork just everywhere oh yeah uh, I can't even imagine and I'm sure that's true for so many other processes too but shout out to uh, our folks in IS for putting together PDPM great yes. stuff Oh, David yeah. Brown. That's yeah. right. <laughs> He's the man for sure. We he work is. with him a lot. So I know it's kind of a pro. The pre-construction process is, is a process, but is there anything like of note going on under your purview right now that you'd like to kind of shout out? Mm. I think as a whole, well, it's pre-construction involved and just MDOT as a whole is the revitalization of our capacity program. Absolutely. Obviously, that's putting yeah. a lot of work on on all of us, including pre-construction, but. I mean, when I first came to work here, that's basically all we were doing. And then, oh, wow. yeah. yeah, I mean, we did, I've seen lots of capacity projects, you know, come to pass in the early part of my career. And then we saw a lull in that for a while. Um, so I, I'm glad to see that coming back up. And that, that's a really good thing for all of us. But it's definitely going to be a, a lot of work for us in pre-construction and everyone else as well. Um, we're in the process of working through our utility relocation and and developing a manual and all for that that that's a big cog in the wheel as I'm well sure, yeah. <laughs> it's trying to get those relocated because um we actually in mississippi we do that before we let a project some states do oh. not they let it as part really? of their construction but we relocate utilities prior to letting the project i would and think so, that, that would be better to, have that to make sure that it's done right. but it, it also can can delay your your sure. project so there's a, a lot of coordination con, yeah. that's required with that so that's something we're working hard to get that interesting yeah what about, uh, before we get into the last couple of uh, fun questions here, what about a little bit of abstract, I'm throwing you a curveball, uh, maybe like a most memorable project or, or event, you know, something that's been, uh, you know, mm -hmm. ideally maybe in a happy way, a, a good way that you that stuck with you, but if there was something, a whew, lesson learned on that one, 
Yeah, share that too. I, I, I can probably do both. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I no. could do. I, well, you know, like I said, I've been here a long time. I mean, this fits me twenty seven years, so yeah. I could I could tell you lots of stories. Um, I think for me, the positive thing is just to drive down a highway and know that you had something to do with that. Yeah, you sure. know, it's it's just re- it's rewarding, and so many people do not. There's just if you know me, you know that I just speak what. <laughs> That's quite all right. Um, yeah. So I don't want to offend anybody when I say this, no, but you know, no. uh, people just do not understand what it takes sure. to get a project from conception to construction, and sure. so to know that you're a part of that, whether it's really small or really large, I mean, that's rewarding to me. So I think that's over. It's just big picture. That's the positive good that I've had. Um, I think the turning point for me was when I first came to work here and I was put in that acquisition agent role and it was on Highway 82 in Montgomery County. We were four lane in that project and one of the ladies we had to uh, make an offer to was an elderly widow lady Mm. and you know she had to tell us the story of how she was like third generation that had been born and raised in her house and was raising her family there and the project was taking her I mean, we were Gosh. going right through our house. And Gosh. when I left there that day, I said, this is not for me. Uh, <laughs> I knew that, you know, that, that, so that was, that was a defining moment. I mean, it wasn't a negative. It just let me know that's, I don't really know what I want to do in right of way, but it wasn't that. Having these conversations <laughs> yeah. is not, yeah, yeah. yeah. It yeah. was, it was not that. And right. it gives you an appreciation, though, for the people who are able to do that and do it effectively. And we've had some great folks to do that over the years. No doubt. Definitely. I would just add to you talk about, you know, not wanting to offend anybody for not knowing the process. Look, I work here. And I, if I had to walk you through from, you know, A to Z, I'm certain that I would miss some things or mess some things up. Oh, yeah. And it's amazing. Me being here as long as I have, the things that I've learned just, I wouldn't say learned, learning over the last <laughs> yeah. 10 months, you know, that, that I didn't know. I mean, it's there's just so much that goes into this. It's, it's a, a great big elephant, you know, you just got to eat it one bite at a time. That's right. It out and uh, we'll get to the fun question. I, j- I just got one more thing. So yeah. we usually ask the internal people this. So you've obviously been at MDOT quite some time. Mm-hmm. So if you're a new person out of school, an engineer, or maybe in another area, so coming to work at the, the at the Mississippi DOT. For me, it's the family atmosphere. It. Um, I mean, I met my husband here. I have raised two children working here. They're going to work here too? No. (laughs) I don't know. One of them, for years, my son said he was going to be an engineer, and now he says he wants to be an attorney. But I I Uh, see him. Full circle. Yeah, yeah, he's math-minded. I feel like he may end up being an engineer and come to work here. Um, But I really do. I think it's the family atmosphere. And, you know, I've seen a lot of people come and go, but I really think that we're the best we've ever been now. Um, You know, when you can retire and you don't want to retire, Shoot um, you up, right? That that says a lot to me, and I think it just goes back yeah. to our people and the family atmosphere. Yeah, I love that, and it's not the first time that that's been said on this show. So I mean, look, uh, listeners out there, that is not a, a talking point we discuss before we come no. into these podcasts at all. It just really is uh, an awesome place to work. So if you're out there looking for a job, if you're getting ready to graduate. Come Holler see us. us. Yes. That's right. We are hiring. <laughs> GoM.com forward slash careers. Yes. Get it up. Person with the actual details. There we go. All right. <laughs> with that, we're going to move into the fun questions. We like to think they're fun. Okay. Um, a little bit of food, a little bit of music uh, as a people, as a podcast. That's going to be my tagline. We like <laughs> to eat. Um, so at any place, you can give us a couple if you need to. Maybe like a mainstay. Where are you going if you have time for lunch in the Jackson Metro? But more importantly, maybe a place that you just don't get to go to very often. Maybe it's, you know, uh, North Mississippi or, or South somewhere that you don't get mm. to go very often, but you just can't miss it if you're in the area. I don't typically do lunch. Okay. Um, I mean, if I do, I love keepers. All right, nothing wrong yeah, with keepers. Yeah, I love to go to keepers. Um, I'm the guy that gets the uh, the hamburger specials when I go there. Oh, do you? So, yeah, so you're, the, you're the odd ball. I feel judged Which, out there. Don't at me. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I typically like that's lunch. Lunch is my time where I decompress. So I close my door I and, uh, you know. Um, but, yeah, I would. I love keepers any time. Great um, suggestion. Statewide, somewhere that we love to go. Obviously, we're Oxford people. As okay. I said earlier, we're Ole Miss people. So anywhere on the square. But as a family, we really love Pl- Proud Larry's. That's, Proud Larry's. That's one of our um, go-tos. You, you can find us there if that's we're in the Oxford. Oxford play? Okay. Yes. All right. Oh, yeah. So that's a cr- perfect transition. Larry's is the most underrated music venue mm-hmm. probably oh. in the southeast. Mm-hmm. It's, it's my special place as well. Love it. Great answer there. And we'll transition 
So let's talk about music. Okay. A concert that maybe has st uh, stuck out for you in the past. What? Mm. Give us that detail. I like all kinds of music, but I would say that um, Eric Church was probably the best concert I've been to. Um, That's a good one. Nice. Hey, I really, yeah, he puts on a great show. I saw him yeah. down in uh, New Orleans one time. And then in Memphis the other time where he actually, you know, he, you say he puts on a good show. He does. He gets into it. He was stomping his foot, and he broke his foot, uh, oh, wow. apparently. Yeah, we found wow. out a couple of days later. So maybe don't get into it quite that much. Well, Eric. the thing about him is, I mean, it's hours of just him. You know, seldom does he have an open and act. And, and if it is, oh, it's, it's true, very yeah. short-lived. You know, most of them have several. He just puts on a good show. But I I like concerts. I like any kind of music. So, I'm, But he would be the one probably that stands out. Love it. Where, Strong. where was that? Um, Tupelo. 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 Okay. Uh, what venue? What is the bank? That's the bank Lander South? Center. Is it? Wow. It no, was? that's is is it that the is it? Oh Lord, I don't know. I thought it was the bank of South. Up but yonder. I don't. Yeah. Is one it? of the. So we got to get the help from the uh, <laughs> production team here. I think Lander's isn't that in South Haven? Or Maybe. There we go. Well, the irony. Uh, see, is I not do lost know my music. See? You do, yeah. The Jeez. irony is not lost on me that I struggle with geography <laughs> and I work at the Department of Transportation. Oh, so. same. At least you can be honest. It happens. Same, same. And speaking of music, we do want to shout out an MDOT employee, yeah. Brad Robbins in Contract Administration Division, Will, Michael Flood, Anna Ergot, myself. We took in the North Mississippi All Stars at Dueling Hall last Thursday. That's right. And uh, he came up and recognized us and said he uh, tunes in the podcast. So. Shout out to Brad. Appreciate you, Brad. Yes, sir. That's Trudy, awesome. thank you so much for coming in and joining us today. Lots of good information. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate it. Absolutely. All we right. can thank Lee for having me here. That's I'm right. Sure. Shout out to Lee for <laughs> And now I can check this it. off my list, and I don't want to <laughs> That's get concerned right. about this. <laughs> That's what you think. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> All right. We'll wrap things up there. Thank you to our listeners, our viewers, for tuning in to the Extra Mile Podcast. Uh, you can watch and listen to episodes by visiting goem.com forward slash the extra mile. Follow us on social media at Mississippi BOT is the handle. We want to thank our producer, editor, Drew Hall, who holds things down behind the scenes. And remember to drive smart out there on Mississippi highways.